Hi guys, it's the Pro Tech Geek here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the iPhone 11. So, I've had this phone since it came out and I've loved using it. I just went for the base 64 gigabytes of storage and I went for this red colour. I really like this shade of red as on the new iPhone 12s, the red looks more like a salmony pink. So if you want a nice shade of red, definitely go for the iPhone 11. So let's talk about the design. So it's a glass back and the glass front. It's an aluminium frame and there's a bottom speaker grill here and one at the top and the lightning port here. And the overall design feels really nice and premium. And I think that's just something you come to expect from Apple. So let's look at the front of the phone. So it's a 6.1 inch liquid retina display, but it's not as good as an OLED panel like on the new iPhone 12s, which is a bit of a shame, which means you can't view full 1080p content. But I feel like if you've never used a phone with an OLED panel, you should be okay. But what about this notch here at the top? Well, some people hate it. Personally, I don't mind it. I feel like eventually you get used to it, but I think this year Apple really needs to consider shrinking it down as we've seen other smartphone manufacturers making much smaller Face ID sensors. So I think Apple really needs to cut the size down this year. So let's talk about the camera. So it's a dual camera lens set up here with the flash below and they're both 12 megapixels. And it's a normal camera and an ultra wide. And I feel the inclusion of the ultra wide camera lens was really nice. And I feel like it's much more useful than having something like a telephoto lens. So I think that was a good choice for Apple to put in the ultra wide camera lens. So it also has a night mode on the normal camera lens. So it works when it's dark. So if I put my finger over here, you see up at the top and you can just, there we go. You can make it brighter or darker but it only works in the normal camera lens. So if you want the night mode on both camera lenses, you'll need to get one of the new iPhone 12s. So also the video is amazing, as you can just come to expect from iPhones now. Like iPhones just have the best video. And yeah, you can always expect good video quality that's really nice. So let's get into the performance. So on the inside, it's an A13 chip which obviously isn't as good as the brand new A14 chip, but I don't think most people will notice because the A13 chip was so good and I think it, your phone will still feel fast from years to come. So I'll show you the Geekbench score here. It was 1,326 single core score and 3,183 multi-core score, which is a really good score. And I think even, you know, heading into the next few years, your phone will still feel fast. So the phone only has four gigabytes of RAM, which is a bit of a shame. It, Apple usually does optimize their RAM pretty well, but every now and again, I'll go into a YouTube video and it'll be closed down. So it is a bit of a shame in that point of view, but if you really want more RAM, buy one of the new Pro models because they have six gigabytes of RAM. Something that Apple doesn't have on any of their phones yet is an 120 hertz display, which would just mean your overall phone would feel faster when you're scrolling about. So I think Apple this year on their new phones needs to include an 120 hertz display. So overall performance is really good. And even without the A14 chip, I think most people will still enjoy this phone and think it is very fast. The battery life in this phone will really depend on how much you use your phone. Personally, I'm a very heavy user and watch a lot of YouTube videos and stuff on it. But if you're a lighter user or a medium user, honestly, it should probably get you through the day. But for my usage, I usually do need to top up throughout the day. So if you are a heavier user, just consider that and maybe make sure you're close to a charger or like a battery bank. Let's get into some of the extra features of this phone. So it has cheap compatible wireless charging. Let's see if I just put it down. There we go, your phone starts charging. The only bad thing is this phone only charges at seven and a half watts compared to the brand new 15 watts on the iPhone 12s. And it also doesn't stick to the back of your phone, which means you've got to angle it, right? So just make sure you're being careful with that so you don't put it on and then the next day your phone's dead. This phone also is IP68 dust and water resistant, 
which means you're good for two metres underwater for 30 minutes. This phone also has a Face ID scanner here at the top. And see, it's fast and reliable. There we go, it opens your phone. The only bad thing is, during the pandemic, obviously we're all wearing masks, which means most of the time I'm having to put my passcode in, which is very annoying. So I really hope that on the new iPhone 13s, Apple decides to put in a Touch ID sensor somewhere, maybe in the button or in the display, just that we can get into our phones. So yeah, that's the extra features of this phone you might have been wondering about. So overall, I love this phone. Even in 2021, I would still recommend it, especially as it only costs £600. So I think you're getting a really good deal. Even in future years, I think this phone will still feel fast. And I really hope that by watching this video, I've helped you on deciding what phone to buy. So if you like this video, please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell icon to know about upcoming videos. Bye, see you in the next one.